George, are you okay with host or do you want to? Yep, no, I, I'm getting good at it. Oh, well, I'm getting yeah, that's used to it. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. I, I, will, I will do it and um, my colleagues will help me if there's a problem. All right, you're all set then. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call this. I'm sorry? Sorry, are you going to put your video on, George? Ah, thank you. Um, I was eating my scone. And now I'm not. So you don't want to watch. Too, just because George sucked it up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to have my breakfast. Um, so seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call this meeting of GOL to order. Um, it is 10.33 um, on May 19th. And pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of GOL is being conducted by remote participation and is being recorded. I'm going to check in with each of my colleagues and um, make sure that everyone can be heard. And I'm going to start um, with Pat DeAngelis. Yeah, I was looking at the agenda and while the citation is very nice and you know I support the, the queer proclamation, um, I wonder if we can't, because those things will go very, very quickly, uh, and even reporting on FinCom will go quickly. I really want us to look at the uh, OCA referral process. I think that's going to take the bulk of the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we keep losing it, uh, not intentionally, but we keep losing it. So I'd like to start with it, and even if we have to put a time limit on it, but it just feels like well, we'll good. come to that in a moment, Pat. I first just want to make sure everybody can be heard, and um, but we will definitely come back to that point in a moment because I have some thoughts on that as well. But uh, so yes, we will come back to that in just a second. Mandy, I'm present. Um, Darcy, here. And and Sarah, present. Thank you. All right, Pat. Um, you, um, so let me put the agenda up on the screen. Um, so share screen. I think that's the agenda. Sure. Okay. So can everybody see that? All right. Um, we do have some very important matters. I agree with items uh, two and three should not take long. We could move those down later in the meeting. I have no problem with that. We have no one coming this, e this uh, morning. Um, so we don't have any guests we have to worry about. Um, so we could move those two. Um, I really do think we have to, we have some serious business related to FinCom um, and time is pressing. And we have even more serious business related to DAB and I need to bring you up to speed on both of those. So I'm a little reluctant to, to push those off later in the meeting. What I'm gonna suggest is we move two and three uh, to the bottom of the agenda um, and I'll keep an eye on time, but I do feel, this is speaking for myself, that we do have to uh, pay, we have to pay some attention right at the top to, um, the status of FinCom and what we're going, how we're going to move forward, and the status of DAB, which is just really time pressured, and I need your help on how to move forward. Um, so I would suggest doing three, four, five, and six is what I would suggest. So I don't I'd like agree. to make sure that the three, four, five don't go over. Uh, an hour or okay. something. So I could really commit to a to hard stop. To... I could, um, I, the only, I agree with you, Pat. So we could agree that by what, um, uh, 1130 at the latest, or maybe 1115, uh, um, we would then turn to item number um, six. I agree it's going to take at least an hour and it may not, may take longer. Um, so we need to leave sufficient time. But I really, we really do need to take care of, of uh, three, four, and five. Um, sure is my personal opinion. So maybe agree that uh, item six would be started no later than 11.15. Sounds good. Okay. To me that's, anyway. I don't well, that's my suggestion. I, and I think Mandy's okay with that. I don't know about the rest of you, Sarah, Darcy. Um, so 11.15, and I would ask the help of, of Pat um, as vice chair, just keep an eye on the clock. Um, Cause I, as you can see, I often get tunnel vision. So when we get to 11.15, just speak up. Don't worry about interrupting me or another speaker. And we will stop and go to item number six. And hopefully we'll get to it sooner, um, but 11.15. Okay? All right. Um, 
So, uh, so that means I have to put everything away that I just put out. Um, I want to take a look at the uh, FinCom status um, quickly. So hang on for a second. Ah, yeah. Make sure I have the right document. Yes, I do. All right. So I got to stop sharing, and then I have to share again. And um, so let's look at this. This is where we stand at the moment. Um, the vacancy notice was published on 511. There were 11 outstanding applications, 11 CAFs um, that are within the three year limit. All of them were contacted. Um, there have been no new uh, applications. Um, and of the 11 that were reached out to, three have gotten back to me saying yes. Um, as, as often the case, many have not responded and most likely will not respond since many of them did not respond this previous time we did this, but the rules require me to reach them out, out to all of them. So we've had three people respond positively. So the pool at the moment has three people in it. Uh, Bob Hegner is um, the current uh, member of the uh, FinCom and he has expressed an interest to continue. Um, Mr. Kim was a candidate in the previous round and he is asked to be considered and Rika, I think it's Rika Clement, um, which is a new, um, uh, someone we've not interviewed before, but um, was had expressed previous interest. So we have three in the in the pool. Um, I would like us to agree on selection guidance today, um, and we could decide. Well, we can't make the pool sufficient yet because we need two weeks to pass. So the earliest we could declare the pool sufficient would be June second, which is our next meeting. So what I'm suggesting is that at that date um, we could declare the pool sufficient. Um, and at that point, begin the, the process of soliciting SOIs. Um, the timeline is tight. Um, How many positions, George? How many just, positions? Just one. We just have one position. Oh, Bob Hegner's, and That's he's, right. and he's right. willing to and continue. He's expressed it, yes. So I think, um, right. So I think given the... Um, Assuming we adopt the usual, uh, if we talk about our, our uh, guidelines and talk about our process and agree on that, ideally today, um, when we meet on the second, we can declare the pool sufficient. I can solicit SOIs. Um, and if we do run into a problem time-wise, um, we would have to push everything off by, by two weeks, but that would not be a real catastrophe. It would mean that the position would be vague. Well, I guess Hagner would continue in theory for two extra weeks, um, but uh, until the new candidate was 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 uh, voted by the council. Um, but if we don't make, I guess what I'm saying is we don't make the June 21 council vote. The next council vote would be, I think, it's July 15th. I don't think that's the end of the world for finance. Finance's work is done, um, so I think we if we have to push things off, we could. But this is a timeline for getting it done so that the position is filled before the end of June. Um, so that's the, uh, and those are the dates. So um, if we were to push it off, we would be making a, so it's July 12th is when the uh, council would meet. So that would be the sort of fallback. Um, let me stop sharing that. I guess just in general, when we think about interviews, our custom in this committee has been to do the interviews um, individually. Each We have everybody come to the same meeting, but we do them sequentially. So one, two, three, however many there are. Two of the three current candidates have been interviewed by this committee before, which also raises an interesting question about um, the interview questions themselves. Um, it has been the practice in this committee up to this time to not take a very formal approach to uh, the, the questions. Basically, each individual committee member can ask one question and a follow-up question. Um, we tend to be somewhat loose about that. Um, our focus is more on getting a chance for people to um, get just to talk. And so for instance, in the case of Mr. Hegner, I would be interested in learning more about um, his experience over the past two years. And that's a question, for instance, that would not be appropriate for Mr. Kim or Ms. Clement or any other uh, candidate. So um, 
I'm a little concerned about, um, well, I'm happy with the process we've used and I think it works well, but um, we have two new members and I need to hear from them about whether they want to revisit this process and make any changes to it. Um, but the current process as is in the document is in the packet. Um, we do the interviews and we tend to do the vote that at that meeting as well, though that could be pushed off if we wanted. Um, so we tend to do the interviews and then discussion and then vote in the same meeting. It's not a special meeting. It's the regular meeting of GOL. Um, that's how we've done it. Any thoughts on that? Do people want to change that? Do they want to, because um, I'd like to know now, if ideally, um, before we start. Um, Sarah, please. Oops. So I feel like I've already died on this hill. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to be resurrected and come back and do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to say that I, I have some concerns with follow-up questions only because I think that follow-up questions then allow someone who's on the selection committee on this, on, you know, that if they have a bias and they have a sort of a political agenda, I feel like it opens the door for some push their political agenda. And so it's back to that old question, is that okay to do or not to do? And I don't think it should, I don't think it should be okay. And I know that some people do. So my preference would be, and, and also you know how I feel about interviews being separate. So my preference would be that there wouldn't be a follow-up question. I'm fine if, if different, in this case with finance committee, if people here feel like, you know, we all get a question and I don't know if you give them, if we're still talking about them having it ahead of time or we want the spontaneity of just being able to, you know, just whip out that question that we have. Um, I don't have a problem, I guess, in this case with people just having a question and asking it cold at that time. Um, but I would rather that the interviews were together and I'm fine with it being one meeting and then we decide. So I'm gonna ask if, if we do the interviews together as was done with planning and CPI where everybody's kind of in a row, um, it kind of forces the questions to be the same question, right? Or does it? Maybe you would say, you don't care what the question is, I just, but I mean, the usual procedure is Smith gets asked yeah. the question and then Jones, then Riley, then right? And everybody gets asked right. the same question, answers it. Uh, as you know, I do not like that, but that's what was, and that's fine, that's what it does. But in this committee, um, we have the individual in front of us um, and we just go around the, the circle and somebody asks a question. For instance, you would read the SOI and you might, something might come out of that that you'd like to ask the, uh, the candidate about, but you can't because you have to submit the questions in advance and the candidate has to see them in advance. And I personally think that's, you know, I just think it's silly. I think you should have the freedom to uh, ask the question you wanna ask um, and a follow-up to that or a, a, usually I allow a second question, period. It doesn't have to be a direct follow-up. It could just be a second question, um, but no more. Largely for the interest of time, um, we had the experience the first time we did this where one of the uh, people being interviewed just loved to talk. And I really struggled. I didn't do very well in kind of getting him to stop talking. Um, and so we, we used up a lot of the time just with, and so that's a challenge just practically. But I mean, we'll all get SOIs. We, I think we all agree the SOIs are really valuable. And you read it, and a question might occur to you that would never occur to me. Um, or you might look at the SOI and find it completely useless, and so you're going to ask something totally different. I would like to ask Hegner about his experience on FinCom, and you know, what's he learned? What what would he change? I don't know, something like that. But you know, I, do we need to write these all in advance? And is it a rigid script? I really would resist that. But it sounds like you are okay with not it being rigid, but you want everybody in the room at the same time. Um, I don't know how others feel about that. Do, do you want a rigid script? Do you well, want to have the flexibility? I'm just at, yeah. Sarah, right, right, right. So I see what you're saying and I understand, um, I understand what you're, that you're saying. What I'm hearing from you is being able to ask the questions somewhat spontaneously, right? And then have uh, follow-up gives you much more of an informative and, and um, uh, more informative 
Yeah, um, it helps me under, get a better in, sense of this right? person and whether I want to support Right, them. Yeah, right. Exactly. And, yeah. and I see, that, I totally see that working in, in theory. And I know that you're saying that, hey, the first time we did it, for the most part, it did work. And I think the only thing that I'm saying is that I think that it's excellent in theory. And I know that what I'm saying seems more canned, right? Uh, mm -hmm. However, I feel like in my experience with OCA and in, in things that we, and even CRC in, in talking about different questions, I feel like it leaves, it makes it more stilted and it, but at the same time, it also, it precludes any questions that have to do with bias. So I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm just saying that that's, okay. the thing that I fear is the bias creeping in and I'm not necessarily right at, at all. So I hear you, I guess that's just my feeling. Others, please. Looks like the way in. And this is a, a time where I feel like, um, given my personality, I like to engage with people um, from questions that arise more spontaneously or naturally. I mean, reading the SOI, that's not a spontaneous thing. It's, you're looking at it and you're trying to understand what's triggering you, what you want to find out. Um, and I prefer that kind of interview to everybody answering the same question. Um, and, and I know that when that happened, it, the question who started would rotate and things. Um, so right now, I would prefer uh, each of us to come with a question or two. Um, and, but I think, I wonder if those questions shouldn't be shared with our committee before we ask them, uh, you know, because uh, each of you might have some input on a question I design or something like that, I don't know. Um, but this is a time, Sarah, where I, I feel like I want to move away from everybody sitting there together. The other piece for me, and I'll bring it up, I brought it up last time. I was really uncomfortable that one person um, sat through the other two interviews. And, the, and if we're gonna allow that, and we maybe have to, then we mm -hmm. should let every candidate know that they can stay in and listen. Um, in my communications, Pat, I do make it clear, but I will also make sure that I make it clear that um, you're welcome to, I mean, the meeting starts at 1030. Your interview is at whatever time, if we do it sequentially, um, but you're welcome to attend the meeting uh, in its entirety, but you'll only be brought into the room um, for questions at the specific moment. And then what you do after that or before that is up to you. I could make sure that everyone knows that. Um, it is a public meeting. We certainly cannot prevent anyone from staying. Right. Right. Um, but I hear you that I could make sure that I believe I did the, the first time, but probably not as clearly as I could have that, um, you know, your interviews at X time, um, but the meeting starts at 1030 and you're welcome to be present during the entire meeting, something to that effect. And then people make up their own minds. Sarah has her hand up. So, uh, Sarah, uh, actually, uh, well, Sarah, if there's a response to something, yes. Otherwise I want to go to Darcy. Do, may I go to Darcy first and then come back or? Is a response to something yeah, in particular? Yeah. Okay. So Darcy. Um. I, yeah, Darcy. No, I think Sarah said she was responding to something. Okay. Fine. It, it just really quick, so just really quick, I think then what I would say is, what if my question that I spontaneously pop on all of you is, I ask this person, um, so uh, we recently had a case where we had to. Um, encourage the finance committee to find a stream of income for the community safety working group. How mm -hmm. do you think you would respond to, to, to that kind of a request? Like, mm -hmm. what if I make it really specific about right. something I care about? That's that. So that's all I'm saying oh, is that it, it, it's inappropriate. And you'll be like, what? <laughs> but somebody could do it if they felt like it was um, important. So maybe if you want to keep the spontaneity, Maybe we do just float questions to each other. If there's some way to do that without violating open meeting law, we send them to George just to make sure that, you know. But then I get to be the judge. And then that seems like a bad idea. I'll <laughs> judge. <laughs> no, really. I mean, you know, why should the chair be the one who decides what are the good questions? What are the bad questions? No, I think there's, there's an I element of risk in this, but, and that's all right. I, it's an open meeting. 
um, you know, uh, as long as people are respectful, um, and I think I don't have any concerns about this committee in that regard. Um, if someone wants right. to ask that kind of question, um, you, you, you or I might think it's unfair, but it's a good test of the individual. Um, th this is a very important committee. They do not vote. We need to remind ourselves of that. They have no voting power, but their, their contribution is extremely valuable. Um, so seeing how they respond under pressure is, is you know, important. So um, I think there's, a, again, I would say value and spontaneity. There is an element of risk um, and hopefully people will use good judgment, but uh, you know, I say we just go for it. Darcy. Yeah, I have a question and a comment. Um, the comment is that I, I, you know, agree with both <laughs> ways of doing this. I, I feel like um, there's definite, uh, a definite reason for having some basic questions that we always ask um, that kind of equalizes the process. And then um, I like the idea of counselors being able to add an additional question, but I know that, um, but I mean, we can, we can vet that by having counselors submit a question to George and then looking at them together before the process. And, and um, agreeing on them, um, but it, so that's complicated. And my question is, um, are, we, are we going through this process right now because we are amending the, the GOL interview process that we already have? I just, I'm um, trying to get a sense from the committee whether they want to revisit the process and change it. Um, and that's an open question. Obviously, I've expressed my opinion, but it's just one of five. I'm trying to get a sense of whether people are satisfied with the process as it currently exists so that I can go forward. Uh, when the time comes, we can go forward. Or do we want to spend more time um, going through our process and revising it in certain specific ways? And maybe we'll need to come back to this next meeting uh, one more time if people do feel they want to make some changes. Um, the current system is pretty loose and, and pretty unrigid. Um, do you want to make it a little less loose and a little bit more rigid, putting it that way? Uh, for instance, do you want to have questions? We did not have questions submitted in advance before. Uh, the chair did not vet them or send them out to other members of the committee, um, is my recollection. Um, people were told you have one question and a follow-up question. Um, read the SOI, and, and that's what we did. That's what I would like to do. But if the, gr if the group here, consensus is that, no, we want to be more... Uh, specific. We want to see what some of these questions are going to be in advance. Then we're going to have to make a decision as a group as to how we're going to do that. So that's what I'm looking for today. A uh, sense from the group whether they want to revisit this process. And maybe today is not the best day to do it, but time is, is running out. Um, or do they want to live with the process as it currently exists um, and so that we can begin to move forward, hopefully, at the next meeting? That's the question. Do you and want to revisit? Also, yeah, we're also looking at I mean, it just seems like a lot of time to put into revising our process when we're also looking at the overall, you know, unifying, getting a unified process between all the... But again, Darcy, that requires the group, the committee, the council to make a decision and we can't control that timeline or... And, no, and, I understand right. that. I understand right. that. Right. It just, you know, seems like... Well, I think also, Darcy, it shows you, at least shows me, that it's, this isn't such a simple thing that... that but what we do here with FinCom is not quite the same as what happens with planning and CPA. And so to have a single process for everything, I mean, look at DAB. We've already agreed that DAB is not gonna have interviews. So if we had a single process for the entire, you know, for all uh, council appointments, DAB would have to have interviews. Um, that, now maybe, George, right now that's your opinion. Absolutely, and, right. And, and, and it's, I think we should go to Mandy, Joe, and then you know, move, it, move it around because I, I... Fair enough. Mandy. So to answer the quick question, I am not in favor of modifying the policy right now that GOL has adopted. I think we should just move forward with it. Um, to respond to some of the things that have been said, I would not be in favor of submitting questions ahead of time to George. I think that would be an open meeting law violation. Um, if the committee decides that 
we have to agree on the questions, then it needs done at an open meeting. And then it, you know, it gets rid of the spontaneity of hearing someone answer a question spontaneously because then they'll be submitted to all the candidates. And that's a decision we make, but um, I don't, I can't support submitting them to one person who then doesn't disclose them to anyone else, but kind of approves of them because I think that's an open meeting law violation. I, and one other thing, I am entirely in favor of setting a time limit to answer each question and enforcing that time limit. <laughs> Thank you. Pat. Well, I, I, I think I would like to stay with the process as it is. Um, I would encourage counselors to have more than one question because if we don't know them in advance, then your question may have been asked. But I want to get uh, the word spontaneous. I want a spontaneous answer from the interviewees, but I don't think my questions are going to be spontaneous. My follow-up might be. And I think that's an important distinction. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that's all I have to say right now. Darcy. Yeah, I just want to say that I'm all for just going with the process that we have now. Okay. And I think Pat uh, makes an excellent point. My assumption is that everyone comes to these interviews with at least one, maybe two or three questions in mind. And then um, that's what I assume we do in preparation. Now, when I did this the first time, I actually did not ask any questions. I just managed the meeting. But I did have questions that I could have asked if I wished. But for the interest of time and for the fact that it's hard for me to do two things at the same time, um, I just... Uh, you know, kept my questions to myself because I felt that they were being addressed. But yes, I would accept, assume everyone comes with questions and um, good. So that, my sense is that we are agreed to go with this process, at least for this round of, of, of appointments or these recommendations with the process as it stands. So I'm not, we're not gonna revisit that. Um, what we need to do next is establish the sufficiency of the pool. And this is a somewhat delicate topic, but um, and I don't really know how to address it, and I'm probably going to step on a landmine here, but given uh, the fact that, that we have um, three candidates um, already expressing interest to, to go forward, um, and one of them is uh, someone who served for two years, I guess to put it in the simplest language, um, I would consider that a sufficient pool. And maybe we should talk about that. Yeah, I do um, too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's in, this, in this yeah. instance, yeah. Um, yeah. and yeah. we interviewed three when Sharon Povinelli uh, resigned. We yeah. interviewed three candidates, and it felt like it, it allowed choice. Right. So it allows choice, but um, okay, so we're not going to, we cannot declare the pool sufficient uh, today. We have to wait until June uh, 2nd, um, and we may get more people stepping forward. Um, and if that's the case, then that's fine. Um, okay, good. So I think that for the moment, if anyone sees something we're missing, um, that, let me just look at the, um, I'm gonna put this back up for a moment, just then we'll move on, um, just so we're agreed. Um, this is the, uh, I wanna look at the timeline one last time. Put it up here. We have 14 minutes left before we shift. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so I need to just quickly look at this because it's very tight. Um, for instance, we, if we determine the pool sufficient on June 2nd, um, I solicit uh, SOIs from the candidates uh, that later that day. Um, they have one week to get them to me. I must have them by June 9th because they have to go up one week before deliberation. Um, so hopefully everyone will be on time. Uh, the rule is that if they're not on time, they're removed from consideration. And so they get one week. Um, then a week later, we do the interviews and our procedure has been up to now to do the interviews and the vote at the same meeting. Again, we can change that if we have to for some other reason, but, and then we would send that recommendation to the council and the council votes on June 21. It's a tight timeline, something could go wrong, but that's what I'd like to try and do. And as I said, if something does go wrong, we can push it off into early July. It won't be that terrible. I'd like not to do it, but that's, Mandy? 
I would just say it doesn't look like we're going to get to voting selection guidance today. So please have the finance chair's input ready for next week so we can vote selection guidance. Because if we don't vote that, we can't move to soliciting SOIs. All right. Thank you. OK. Thank you. What I have to show you here is DAB, okay? Um, and we have a problem. George? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Just before you share a screen, I just yeah. want to remind um, we're not supposed to be sharing names publicly. And since this is recorded, names should not be shared. We've all received the, the CIFs. Okay. So I'm trying to see what document I've written that has names on it. I think I have. I don't know whether you have or not. Yeah, I think, well, I think I did on the, yeah, okay. All right. Um, I think I probably did show something on the previous slide. Um, okay. Let me see what I got here. I will, um, now this is, this is the timeline. I guess what I need to tell you is this. Um, we have currently, I believe, eight um, applications for the uh, there are 13. There are 13. I'm sorry? There are 13. Applications for DAB? Oh, unless they were- Well, maybe if some came in today, I mean- I, I, else. I, 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 I'll have to double check. I, I thought there were 13. No, I have a slightly lower number, but, but it's more than eight some, um, have now. In, some have come in in the last day or two? Okay. Yeah, there's right. three that came in this morning. Okay, yeah. good. All right. So then definitely the number's gone up. Um, and uh, all right. Let me just find the DAB file because I need to give you accurate. Okay. So we've had applications from all districts. Um, and so one question is whether we can, you know, all right. Let's look at this. We may be able to, what I had promised everyone was to uh, adopt, we would send out selection guidance and declare the pool sufficient today. Um, I don't see how we can do that, um, especially since I haven't had a chance to update the pool. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at the, these the, the applications that have come in in the last couple of hours or the last uh, half, half a day. Um, what I had was what I had last night. Um, so, I guess I need some advice here. Um, we could come back to this later in the meeting. Um, I realize that we only have 10 minutes. Um, what I had promised everyone that I've reached out to so far, I've contacted everyone who sent us a CAF and told them I would get back to them on or about the 19th, um, send them selection guidance. Um, I think we're ready to, I think we've, ex have we voted on selection guidance? I don't think we have. Um, so we could do that now. Um, what we basically agreed is that we will not do interviews. We'll rely on the SOIs. Um, I think everything else we've gone through and we're happy with, but uh, I need to make sure that's true. Um, we could declare the pool sufficient right now, um, but there's gonna be some districts that don't have, I, I just haven't had a chance to look at what we've got. I'm sorry, I just, uh, um, and I don't know if anyone else is, uh, Mandy, have you had a chance? Has anybody had a chance to look at the CAFs? I have. Um... I, looking at it, if we're aiming for a pool of candidates, a sufficient pool that would allow us, which we normally do, um, choice, yeah. um, the only district that conforms to that right now is District 1. Right. Um, you know, we can appoint up to two individuals from each district, which means a pool should probably be no less than three. 
um, but probably looking hopefully more like four, um, one district only gets one no matter what. Um, but the only district that is sufficient in that sense is district one. Um, districts two, three, four, and five would not be sufficient under that criteria. Um, in terms of diversity, um, gender and race are not diverse, I would say. Um, we're doing decent on age diversity um, when, if we look at diversity for sufficiency of pool. But given that in theory, only if we want choices, only district one is sufficient from numbers point of view. And that would not be if we went forward with district one only enough to actually convene the committee quorum wise. Um, it, it gives me pause to do only that one on a separate timeline because we still wouldn't be able to have a quorum, appoint a quorum of a committee versus if we get a couple more districts where we could get to a quorum of a committee, um, it might be wise to do it. So I, I am in support of waiting another two weeks. Um, the timeline gets screwed up that way, but um, hopefully if we can go back to council and everything, we can get some more candidates in all the districts in the next two weeks. Yeah, I see. I think that three is would be deemed sufficient too, but I agree that one, um, it's probably just two districts. I see three in three. Um, and there's some that I have, I don't know what district they're in, but. Yeah, I, I will, I promise to, to go through. What I've been doing is putting them into, I, I do the research and put them in their districts, um, but I haven't had a chance to look at the most recent submissions. I'll do that later today when I get a moment. Um, and I send immediately a notification of receipt and I put them into the various files, but it sounds like, and I, I think three is is really bare minimum and really I'm not comfortable with it. So I'm a, an agreement that this timeline is, is, is not something that's given to me by Sua Dad or, or by the state. Um, so we have a little bit of time to play with. It'd be nice to be able to get this done the way we originally planned it, but two weeks is not gonna make that much difference. Um, it does look like July and August are gonna be the you know main months until, so um, I think we can still, two weeks more won't hurt. And at that point, um, so I can revise this and I will notify all the candidates that we've pushed it off by two weeks and that they'll hear from me now at another point. Am I hearing that people are happy? They're, they, they, they can live with the, the guidance the, that we have, the document that we presented to the council, they're happy with that. And uh, do we need to vote on that? Do we need to uh, um, adopt it or can we just agree that, that by consensus that that's the process we're gonna follow? Um, and so, I, I, yeah. I think we already agreed on the process, but the selection guidance, I think we have to actually vote on. Right, which would be at the next the next meeting, we would vote on selection guidance. No. All right. Did Any some other? type of outreach go out in the last day that, that resulted in three applications today? Uh, I think the town clerk did something. Um, I made a few individual outreach efforts. Um, maybe the League of Women Voters is beginning to have some impact. Maybe Paul uh, did something with the CFOs or the, uh, the Residence Advisory Committee. Um, there are a number of initiatives that are out there. I think we just have to give it a little bit more time. Um, and I think two weeks is more than enough. Um, and hopefully by that point, we will have a sufficiently large pool that we can then um, get going. Sounds good. Okay, all right. We have four minutes. Well, I think we can, I think that's, um, we can just, let me see. Um, for a second. Um, so what we've agreed is that we're gonna postpone DAB for two weeks. I will notify people of that. I will I'll go through the most recent applications. We do need to vote on selection guidance at the next meeting. Um, so the next item is item six. Okay. Great. So let's go there. Um, and what I'm going to suggest that it's open to obviously to debate is that we use, so uh, Darcy and I went through uh, this, uh, the OCA process, and we produced a document for you to review both redlined and clean. And um, so let me stop sharing, put that away. 
I was going to, so uh, I was going to use, Mandy also went through our document and had some comments. And so I was going to work with that document since it has all three um, comments uh, in it that we can review. Um, let me see if I can find it quickly. Okay. Bear with me for a second. Okay. What is going wrong here? Hang on for a sec. Okay. Okay. I'm getting there. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Let me share. Okay. So let's see that everyone can see this. What the hell is that? Excuse my French. All right. Does that need to be made larger? People can see no, it. A little larger would be good for me, okay, if possible. Uh, let's see what I can do. Zoom. It's 150. Let's try 200. How's that? Oh, that's very good. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. So, my thought is we're going to have to go through this section by section. Um, as I say, what we're looking at right now is a document that has been um, viewed uh, uh, by three of us uh, at different times and places with comments and changes. Um, the most recent here are Mandy's, but um, so town council policy and procedures has been, so that has been struck. Okay. We also get this. So I have track changes on, so I can make track changes to this as we go. Um, this has been struck, so I'm going to take this out. I can put it back in, but I'm going to take it out. Um, this is an issue that we maybe need to discuss right from the get-go. Um, the approach that uh, has been taken by some is to distinguish policy from procedure. And so a number of things have been uh, suggested to be removed or have been removed. Um, from these drafts because they're uh, too much procedure and not really policy. This is a policy. Um, so people need to speak up if they don't agree. Town council policy on town council appointments to multiple member bodies. And this draft is now, I'm gonna change the date. Okay. And the other issue is uh, we did not be, we're not specific. We didn't mention the bodies. So for instance, um, if this policy were in place from the council and the DAB came along, um, we could not do what we did with DAB. So one question is whether we wanna make this specific to specific bodies, i.e. Um, FinCom, CBA and planning, or do we want to keep it as it is? This would apply to any multiple member body appointed by the town council. I think we have to look at that after we look at the body. Okay, all right, so we'll leave that question for the moment uh, open. We are agreed this is a policy document and anything that we agree as a group is uh, too much procedure should come out. But again, it'll be case by case, but the focus here is on policy, according to this title. Well, yeah. Go, go ahead. Procedure can be policy. So we'll, we'll, we'll just look at it as it comes. Case by case, okay, all right. 
So we're going to do line by line. The charter gives the council the authority to appoint members to certain multiple member bodies, such as the planning board, zoning board of appeals, and the non-voting resident members of the council finance committee and the appropriate references. Herein is laid out the policy to govern such appointments. Um, now. Again, most of what we're dealing with is the actions of specific committees who are actually not making the appointment, but are making recommendations. And this policy is meant to guide how they go about making their recommendations. You could just add to govern recommendations for such appointments. And are people comfortable with that distinction? That basically what this is meant to do, as I understand it, is to guide um, council committees that are supposed to make recommendations, guide them in how they do that. It's not actually governing the appointments themselves. So is there any, Andy, yeah, go ahead. Uh, just the language, I'll just put it in, we can play with it, but you wanted to suggest what, to govern how recommendations are made for such appointments. That's the distinction that I think is important to make, but I, I'm just, uh, we're doing this together. And adopting, I'm sorry. I don't understand the difference. It's the difference. Well, as it's written, this policy governs such appointments. So let's go back. Maybe again, it's just you're right. The policy, the council has the authority to appoint members to certain multiple member bodies. Okay. Herein is laid out the policy to govern such appointments. And the title is Town Council Policy on Appointments to Multiple Member Bodies. I guess the the what I hear from George is nearly the entire policy as written is governing committee actions to get to a recommendation to the council, not the council's vote at the end of that at at a council meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not necessarily governing the council's vote on appointments, it's governing getting to a recommendation to the council. Right. It's basically the council's policy on how town council committees who make recommendations to the council for appointments to multiple member bodies are to, to do that. Really. So, so you're saying that the, the committees might have a standard selection criteria or whatever, uh, but that the council would not need to follow that. Well, the council under this draft is not adopting that selection criteria, the committee is. So if you want the council to have to follow it, I think the council then would have to adopt it, not the committee. Well, it's, I thought that's what this process was, that we are adopting a unified process as a council around appointments. Um, and well, the, yeah, the, okay. I, I don't I don't understand how what I guess I don't understand what we're talking about here. It, um, mm -hmm. So for example, if the committees had a unified process where where they included that preference language, you're saying that that would just be the language used by the committees to make the recommendations, but then when the recommendation gets to the council, the council doesn't need to use that. I think Sarah would like to say. Please go ahead. I'm sorry, Sarah. Thank you. So if, if this is indeed what we're saying, um, then I, my question would be, um, I think one of the biggest issues that's difficult for the council in making these appointments is when it gets to the full, when the vote comes to the full council. 
So my question would be, if we do this on, we do a policy on selection to for appointments of the committees, are we then going to do a separate document to help guide the town council on their selection to appointment process? Because I don't think you can have one without the other because if it's a free for all, once everything gets to the council and there's no guidance and the council itself doesn't follow any rules, then why in God's name would we be spending all of this excruciating time in committees? It doesn't make any sense. I would say there's guidance for everyone. And if we make a separate document, then we make a second document, but it, it doesn't make any sense to give, you know, extreme guidance to the committee and then tell town council, whatever you want. So it's either, it should be the same, either it's whatever you want for the committees and for whatever you want for the town council, but it, or each gets selection guidance, I think. Okay, Mandy. So I think we're confounding two issues. One is, do we want each committee that is tasked under our committee charges making to make recommendations on these body appointments to operate under the same policy, meaning they always have to do interviews, they always have to accept an SOI, they always have to announce it so many days in advance and only you know, deem a pool sufficient by a, after a certain time that it's been posted. Do we want uniform policies on how that happens in committee or not, I think that's question number one. And my understanding is the reason we're dealing with this is because the council wants the committees to do potentially interviews the same way, or at least always hold committee, hold interviews say, or always have selection um, statements of interests and always adopt selection guidance of some sort. Um, so that's question number one. But what I'm hearing from Sarah and Darcy, which is what I can't agree with is that they want a policy that every counselor, when they are tasked with making a vote at the council on who to appoint, and those tasks are individualized, that the counselors, that they want the council to say, you have to follow this rule when you vote. And as a counselor, I can't agree to that because I was elected by the residents to make that decision on my own once I'm at the council. And I can, and, and this is where we get really disagree on all sorts of things. You're asking almost, I feel like, let's take it to a different issue. If we said, well, everyone has to, the whole council has to decide and take into X consideration when they vote on the budget. And if the budget meets X, that it's balanced, you have no decision to say nothing else because well, we said the guidance is you vote yes on the budget if the budget is balanced you've taken away all my what I was elected to do and I can't agree to doing that on these appointments either. Uh, I have um, I have a looser interpretation of guidance. Um, when I go to put a tent together there there are directions there's guidance about how it's supposed to be done Generally, I don't follow it until I mess around and then I follow it uh, or not because sometimes my messing around works. So I don't feel like um, having guidance determines how I need to vote. So that, you know, that's where I disagree with you, Mandy. Um, having guidance is, gives me a framework to think about things, but my decision comes from a very different place or hopefully it comes out of my thinking. That was a bad way of stating that, but you know what I mean, I think. I think, I think we're hearing at least three of us say that we should take that language out, but. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, the, in other words, the changes that have been made so far should be removed. That's what I'm hearing. Um, so, um, the distinction that, that I thought might need to be made between um, a policy governing such appointments in general. Um, okay. The red. I, I, yeah, right, I understand that, that you would like that to be, to be stricken. Um, 
I'm just trying to be clear on what this, I mean, I think the idea of a preamble is important. I think that the preamble needs to be absolutely clear, um, as clear as we can make it. So that was the spirit in which this was suggested, but maybe this makes it, I don't know. Uh, I see Sarah's hand up. So I can see the the wisdom in making um, this statement saying that this is how the committees you go about making recommendations to the council because I think that Mandy Joe is right in the sense that how committees go about selecting recommendations to the council and then the council's actual vote are two separate things. And in order to get this document done, I think I would be willing to say, well, right now, why don't we concentrate on how the committee, uh, you know, maybe we keep this wording in and say for, for making things very specific so we don't have any muddied waters. Right now, this particular document only addresses how committees make selection to make recommendations for appointment to the council. Um, you know, I'm okay with that because I think that it's true that I, I myself would like something for the council, at least I'm, I, I know what Mandy Joe is saying, and I, I, I agree in the fact that we all do have to come from however we feel. We can't just say, you know, if you have one plus one, then hey, two wins all the time, because sometimes, you know, math doesn't work on for what we're doing. I guess what I'm thinking is what Pat said is a little bit, um, I, I think that, that maybe just giving some general guidance to the to the council right so it's saying you know if we decide there's no term limits right if we're we're deciding that i think there should be a separate document to town council for counselors to help right so you tell councils either this is what we think about term limits or don't even think about term limits right i mean there should be some just general things for counselors to consider and i think especially we've all gone through this a lot but council is going to change. And I think that for posterity and for helping other councils, I just think that maybe we should have a separate document that just helps even guide the thinking, right, of the council, or at least lays out the things that the committees have said, right, the term limits is a big one to me, right? If we decide there are no term limits, then I think that's something that counselors know that they need to take into consideration. It doesn't mean they have to do it, but it's something that they need to take into consideration because those are our rules. I don't know if that's useful or not. Mandy. That is extremely useful, Sarah, to me. Um, and I would be interested in working with you on trying to draft something like that. But for what we're doing today, if I understand Sarah's point and your agreement with her, if I understand it, is that this document is essentially to guide those committees that are making recommendations to the council. And that's our focus here. So that going forward, uh, the chair and the members of, of GOL or the, ch the chair or members of CRC consult this document um, assuming it's approved and it gets uh, voted um, to guide them in how they go about making recommendations for these particular multiple member bodies. It's not a document that is directed to the town council as a whole and designed to tell counselors or guide counselors, whatever word you want to use, how they should vote. That's, uh, I think, so this is focused, if I understand what you're saying, Sarah and Mandy, this is focused on giving committees, these two particular committees guidance from the council. So it's addressed to those committees from the council. It's not a document addressed to the council as a whole. Does that make sense? That's how I understand this. And I that's would what say guides, yes. I'm sorry. I would say yes, but I would also say that with a caveat that I would be very interested in trying to. I think that it has to come with the statement that we GOL will come up with general guidance to the entire council for when these recommendations come to them. I, I and again, I'm willing to have it be, you know, definitely written from a hey, these are 
these are, you know, it's guidance, but I, I do think that we need to have both. Okay. okay. Mandy? I, I am willing to move forward with that. If, if that is our decision, we can change the title to town council policy on committee for committees making recommendations for town council appoint. I'm just making something up right now. I know, I know. I, I, whenever I, like I describe this in my minutes, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's, yeah. We could come back. I mean, the preamble again, maybe something that we'll have to refine, um, but I'm getting a sense, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that the focus of our discussion today is on that idea of guidance to committees who are making recommendations. And so I'm gonna leave this language in, but I agree with um, Darcy that we will come back and revisit it at the end. Um, the following policies shall apply to all appointments, multiple member bodies made by the town council. Again, we'll come back to that, but that's a fairly simple statement. Vacancy. Um, I'm gonna read the entire paragraph. Um, please speak up if you have any concerns or changes. Um, when a vacancy or impending vacancy occurs on a multiple member body appointed by the town council, the chair of the council committee responsible for recommending appointments to the council for that body shall write and submit to the clerk of the town council for publication on the town bulletin board a vacancy notice in accordance with charter section 9.12e. A vacancy occurs whenever the town clerk receives a signed resignation from a member of the body, a member passes away, or a member is removed from the body in accordance with charter section 2.9e or section 9.14. An impending vacancy occurs when, whenever member, okay, an impending vacancy occurs whenever a member informs the council of their intention to resign or a member's term is expiring, regardless of whether that member seeks reappointment. I think this is clear, I think it's fine, but anyone, concerns, questions, changes, made one change here, that's it. Mandy. I just had one question on the, the highlight of the chair of the council committee. Um, the way it's written, there isn't sort of, I know George, you consulted GOL before you posted the vacancy notice. Um, based on this language as chair of CRC, I did not. I just posted a vacancy notice on the bulletin oh, board. Right. So is this something that we want the chair to handle with consultation or without consultation from the committee making the recommendations? You could insert upon consultation, upon consultation with the committee shall write. I, I, don't, I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other, but um, you could make that change. I also don't have it. It's just a question I brought up for what- I understand, right, exactly. Do people want to make that change? Do they feel strongly about it? Uh, in other words, uh, assuming a chair- We could doing make that, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, please speak up. We could make that change or could say, uh, uh, the chair of the council committee or their designee, which um, that's a separate issue, but why don't we put both of them in? So the chair of the council committee or their, de or their designee responsible for recommending appointments to the council for that body. I think Upon the designee would be after body. Okay. Or their designation there. Yeah. I mean, so it, after, it, it could be after, you know, you write it after consultation with the committee. It's just. It, after consulting with the committee shall submit. Shall write and submit. Consulting with the committee. Right. Yeah. Can yeah. we get rid of write and and just say shall submit to the clerk? Yeah. 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 
So it, it sounds like we would like to make it the practice that the chair, whoever he or she may be, um, consults with the committee um, before they post the vacancy notice. Okay. Any other changes to this section? We will go back through this at the end, uh, maybe not today, but, um, and give you all a chance to look at it um, in the light of day instead of in the heat of the moment. Yeah, I would just make the comment that, um, you know, I have an interest in getting this back to the council fairly quickly, but if it ends up that we don't do that, um, I have a whole lot more comments that I would make if we were, <laughs> if it were a slow process, because there's, you know, I, those of you who used to be on OCA know that I objected to a lot of this. Um, are you thinking but, of the CAF in particular, the CAF section, or are you also thinking of the vacancy section? Because I think, Mandy, excuse me, Darcy, if you have serious concerns or reservations about any of these sections, you should speak up, um, for better or worse. I think you should. Um, this is going to take as yeah. long as it takes. I cannot and I will not rush this just because you or anyone else wants it done tomorrow. I will push it as fast as I can, but it is a, as you can see, this is not an easy thing to do. Um, and um, hopefully we'll get it done sooner rather than later. But I would personally urge you, if you have an objection to section one, vacancy, that you feel strongly about, you should speak up. Is there something in section one about vacancy that you feel we should discuss or that you would like us to come back and talk about? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, what good, what is that? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I uh, the last sentence, the mm -hmm. whole, whole concept of an impending vacancy. Um, um, okay. Is, um, you know that go that goes to the whole issue of of uh, you know whether how how existing member reappointment should be handled. Um, so that can can you clarify that more because I'm I'm not seeing a problem with it and I'd like to understand what your thinking is. Um. I think that um, I personally would not like to treat reappointments as vacancies. Um, so that, you know, that I, we've, okay. that and, you know, like if the majority, the, you know, the super majority or whatever of the council doesn't agree with that, then I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on it, but I'm just saying. Well, it's important to note it. I, I, it. I think it is valuable, Darcy, that you at least note your objection for the record, um, yeah. even if it's the only, right. And so your objection or concern is that you would not like, um, again, if you just rephrase it for me again, just so I get it right, you would not like um, to treat reappointments as, as vacancies. Thank you. Okay. Sarah has her Sarah, hand. Please, yes, thank you, Sarah. I agree with Darcy and the fact that, that this brings up a lot of other issues because if we say that um, a reappointment is not looked at as a vacancy, then that means somebody could serve 20 years. I mean, we haven't talked about, unless you put something in about you know, term limits, I just want to be really clear, unless term limits also are stated here, this means that any reappointment, at least the way I read it, literally, is that if someone, they could stay in for 100 years unless there's something said about at what point we don't uh, consider um, you know, when someone's term is up. I mean, if, so oh. I, I don't know how we would, 
I, I understand Darcy saying that she doesn't want to see it that way, but I, again, do we want people to be in for until the day they fall dead? I mean, that's where I guess I would look for a clarification. Well, don't, don't we treat this later in the document? I, I think we're, we're getting, right, this is treated later in the document. We'll discuss that when we get there. I think there is, I think, a consensus about reappointments, about a preference for six years, a preference, but that comes later in the document. Here, we're just trying to distinguish, again, there seems to be some disagreement about vacancy versus impending vacancy. Um, I just wonder, and I yeah. don't know if Andy Joe has thoughts on this. I'm just wondering if we're really looking at it from reading things in a, so I, I don't I want guess it to be ambiguous. Maybe not. So maybe not. Maybe we all agree that that doesn't matter because later we talk about term limits. But when I don't see anything about that in vacancy, but I could be wrong. I, that's just something I'm wondering okay. if it belongs here as well or no. Andy. Here, here's my thoughts. We have to deal with what an impending vacancy is because under section 9.12, which these multiple member body appointments are subject to, 9.12 E says vacancies. Whenever a vacancy occurs or is about to occur on a multiple member body, the appointing authority shall immediately cause public notice of the vacancy or impending vacancy to be published on the town bulletin board. So we have to figure out what about to occur an impending vacancy means. And the only other thing I would state, which is also something I stated to the town manager when he was not even posting these as openings, um, people who wanted reappointment was, well, if it's not an impending vacancy or vacancy, why are we acting? The fact that we actually have to act to appoint someone to that position, even if it is someone who is technically a reappointment means that there is a vacancy at some point because if we don't act there's an opening their their term ends june 30 whatever year and without any action that's a vacancy there's no automatic renewal or anything anywhere and so i see this first one as defining what impending vacancy means and not taking a position one way or the other on, on reappointments, term limits, or anything else. I have to agree, I don't see, but again, Darcy, I understand Darcy does not agree with me, but I don't see how this is taking a position one way or the other on that. It's simply distinguishing two categories um, and doesn't say yay or nay about whether you get to stay on forever or you, whatever. That seems to me totally different. So. Uh, the, the concern is noted in, and will be in the notes in, in, the, in the report. Um, Pat. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm daydreaming. The other Pat. Right. <laughs> uh, bad daydream. Um, I am not uncomfortable with it being stated the way it is here. Um, I think that I am uncomfortable with um, giving reappointment and making reappointments automatic. And I say that for a couple of reasons. Um, but one of them is sometimes a new candidate has experience that is would bring something vital to the committee. And uh, a person who has the term is expiring or they're seeking reappointment has been doing really good work, but this other person brings something, I want to be able to choose. The other piece for me is um, we're white. Most of our, not all, but mo the majority of our committees continue to be white. And a person's color is not a reason specifically for me to vote for them. And in fact, it can be a kind of reverse racism. Well, I'm going to take Josephine because she's Asian or whatever. Um, it seems to me that it becomes critical though that if um, a person of color has applied for a position on a committee and they're, they're possibly new to government, they're, but they're bringing an incredible ex work experience or educational experience to the a committee or potentially bringing that, that's a good vote. 
And it's a good vote because they may be a really uh, outstanding candidate. And also we're beginning to look and say, okay, we need more diversity. Um, nothing should trump anything else, I uh, hate using that word, but um, Anyway, that's kind of what I'm putzing in my brain with. All right. Um, we're happy with the language of one, at least for the moment. And Darcy's concern has been noted. Sarah, would you say you share that? Should I say that two members um, are uncomfortable with treating reappointments um, as vacancies? Um. I'm okay with the language. I'm okay with the language as right. it is right now. Okay. All right. All right. Um, section two, community activity form. Individuals interested in serving on a multiple member body appointed by the town council shall fill out a CAF to express their interest in service. CAFs are kept on file for three years. If an individual, including a current member of the body, submitted a CAF within the past three years, they do not need to submit a new CAF. If an individual's address or contact information has changed since they submitted a CAF, they should contact the town council to update their CAF. CAFs for multiple member bodies appointed by the town council are separate from the CAFs for the town manager appointed multiple member bodies and are automatically electronically distributed to all councilors immediately. The chairs of the recommending committees or their designee shall reach out to each applicant upon receipt of their CAF to confirm receipt of their CAF and maybe just to confirm receipt. Can I take out that? Do you care? Wait, where uh, are you? Oh. That's all right. Um, it's just my- Yeah, uh, yeah I got it. I, I'm thinking of just taking that out. Yeah. Just to, get, just to get a little bit less and inform them of the current status of appointments to that body. Okay, CAFs are personnel records, not public documents and therefore cannot be shared or distributed by counselors. Okay, again, I would note that one member objects to um, the treatment of CAFs as personal records. Now there are two of us. Two people, all right, good, good, two members. Okay. Um, and I, yeah, I'm, I, uh, I also um, huh? Huh? don't, um, like the the um, fact that the the CAFs are um, only distributed to the, the new CAFs are the only thing that counselors receive, so they don't see the pool anymore. They used to see the whole pool, and now they don't see the pool anymore. Um, so um, yeah, hmm. that, that's another objection. Okay, let's. I ask a question about that. Yeah, please go ahead. Because we determine the pool as, you know, in terms of the whole council, once you're on the council, you get anything submitted from the time you were on the council to the time you leave the council, but the entire pool later in this document is deemed those who submit statements of interest. And the council sees all of the statements of interest and all of the CAFs even though they're not public documents, even if that CAF was submitted before the counselor became a counselor, during the count, you know, for the council meeting where the council votes that. So I don't quite understand your comment of the council doesn't get to see the whole pool because the council does see the whole pool as we've defined pool in this document. Right, it's a question of timing, for example, none of us have seen anything about the applicants for finance committee right now. Whereas in the past, we would have received their CAFs. Um, but now we haven't gotten to the period of time when they'd have an SOI and we don't get their CAFs because they are, they, they've submitted them formerly we could search our emails to try to find everyone who ever applied for the finance committee, but we wouldn't know which ones of them have accepted because we don't have that information yet. Um, so uh, anyway, what I'm saying is it's much less transparent to counselors now than it was. Um, 
And uh, yes, we will get them two weeks before the, the uh, you know, the interviews, but we would, we would have them a, a month or six weeks before in the past. And why would this be uh, somehow a desired state? Um, is that because you want to uh, say, oh my goodness, I don't like this pool. I'm going to go out and find some other people. Is that, is that what, what's going on here? Well, that, uh, that could be, yeah, could be for anybody on the council if, if we're- And so you, right, and, you and know, two, like, weeks, two no, weeks in advance, yeah, is not enough? There is, um, the, the more transparency to counselors and to the public, um, I feel like is better. So anyway, those two things, you can just note my objection. Uh, the second one, again, if you could restate it, please. Um, so um, you, I understand you object to the treating of CAFs as personnel, uh, as personnel records. And the second right. is you object to uh, the fact that- CAFs, that, we use CAFs and CO, SOIs instead of CAFs because the CAFs came more quickly and directly to, you know, they had the information on them and they came directly to us. Um, and now, now we get the CAFs, but they don't have any information on them. Um, so anyway, yeah. Well, maybe you can send me at some point because I, I don't know that I can write that in a sentence that I can understand. So um, I, I'm not, I don't push you now, but if you could at some point maybe communicate to me um, uh, exactly what it is that, it, that you, uh, in this paragraph that you object to, because it doesn't say anything about that at all you object to something larger, which is that if I understand you and I'm still struggling, um, you want to know at any given moment um, who all has, a, you know, I mean, it's three years of time, right? Who, who all over the last three years um, has expressed any interest in serving on, on FinCom? And, um, and you want to know that, what? Every, every other month you want to be informed? I, I just don't, um, at, at what point do you want to know? Because um, those people, most of them will not even respond to us. No, I just think the applicant should, should uh, um, use, should um, submit new CAFs instead. Ah, okay, all right. Instead of SOIs, but that's- Okay, my, all right, well, that, that's, that's oh okay. Um, so we could, I mean, one, we could say that, you know, um, everyone should submit a new CAF. I mean, that, it doesn't take long. It it's doesn't, you know, and, it, and, you know, so we could, that's something we could consider is, is and, and that way, um, everyone would be alerted. Um, I understand your concern is it's kind of like uh, these, you know, trust me, going back over three years um, to find these is, is not a lot of fun, but um, it's even harder for, planning and zoning, but um, so one possible suggestion is that we could require um, that if someone wants to be considered, they submit another CAF. Is that is that onerous? Do people object to that? I mean, I, I'm not saying we're gonna do it today, we're gonna decide today, but that's something worth thinking about. Um, any thoughts on that? interesting idea that you know that every time a notice of vacancy goes up if interested or still interested you must submit a caf and then i guess you'd only count those CAFs submitted from the start of the first vacancy notice um even if one was submitted two weeks before that would we have to go back to that person and say oh you're not quite counted yet um you know, I, I, it's, it's an interesting thought. I think I'd have to give it more consideration, but I'm not necessarily totally against it. And mm -hmm. part of that is my reaction as chair of CRC, where I'm going back three years and never getting responses, and the pool just keeps getting larger. The quote pool gets larger and larger, mm -hmm. but the actual pool is quite small. Um, is it really asking that much? If someone is seriously, you know, interested, just to take five minutes or ten minutes at the most, less than that, and just uh, communicate to us by filling out the CAF that they would like to be considered for the current vacancy. Um, I, I, I really don't see the CAFs as very valuable. I mean, it does have uh, demographic information on it, 
which we could ask for in the SOI. I've never, uh, we, I also keep them. So everybody who sent one in about planning or zoning is in my file on planning and see, you know, but I don't, I must admit, I do not go back over to see if, if somebody's missing that I want to contact. Um, I, I, I think I like the idea of people, whether they've filed a CAF before or, uh, or are filing it for the first time that they're doing, they're putting out some energy that, you know, uh, I, I think that, I, I don't know, I, and yeah, I mean, that energy can simply be put out because they get contacted by a chair of a committee on, are you still interested in, because we right. have an opening, so. Right. I, and then I would say, um, and if you are, please fill out a new CAF. And that, you know, yeah. now what I say is just get back to me, which is also fine. But it does address Darcy's point, which I think is a legitimate one, that when you're dealing with CFs over three years, um, you know, most of us don't keep, uh, you know, less than even, right? So this would alert um, every council member um, when the committee is getting ready to uh, begin the process of making a recommendation, who is interested and who isn't. The CF, really, you're right, Pat, it doesn't contain a whole lot of useful information, though it does contain some. Um, it's mostly a, a way of uh, people expressing their interest and also alerting counselors as to who's, appoint, who's applying. And I, I think that's perfectly legitimate. So maybe we need to think about uh, changing that slightly and saying, look, if you are interested, please submit a new CAF. Mm -hmm. um, let's come back to it, but I think it's an interesting thought. And that would, I think, address Darcy's concern. And also, as you just said, um, you know, basically says to the person, well, if you really want to be, you know, take five minutes and just send us a CAF. Sarah, has Sarah I'm sorry, go ahead, please. So something to consider is that when people, I don't know this, when people fill out a CAF now, do they get like a copy of what they filled out? I, what I'm thinking is, is that if they had a copy of, you know, like a receipt of it, right? Like you just filled this out and they get kicked back what they filled out what i'm thinking is is that then it like makes it even easier because if you have a copy but you did you could literally copy and paste if if like in the worst case scenario that you know in two weeks like you have to do one for something if you if the town automatically gave you receipt or whatever of the caf it's a copy and paste that would make it even easier yeah uh, do you the cafs have no substantive information in them anymore though that's well, they have demographic information. They have demographic information. Which is important information. And right. they also uh, then alert the chair of the individual committee, which is what I do, and I assume that Mandy does as well. And you, I immediately respond, uh, give a personal note, um, saying thank you, uh, and, and letting them know what the status is. So it, it serves a multiple of purposes. You're right, it's not, it's not a substitute for an SOI, but it does do some very important things, the le not the least of which is just it brings them in contact with town government, with, with council. Now, so, what the town does is a whole other question, right? Because given so many committees and so on, it may just be beyond human capacity. To, but what we do right now as chairs of these two committees is I respond, and I assume Mandy responds to every single CAF, letting the person know we got it and telling them where things stand. Yeah, I, to answer Sarah's question, I just looked up our council CAF um, and it does have a checkbox to say, email me this form. You can uncheck that. So it would be up to the individual to get a copy of that or not. Can I just ask one more? And, I, and this is probably, we're all gonna be thinking about these things is that people who uh, fill one out and say they're interested in all committees or three committees, um, then would we have to make it clear that you can fill it out for these three committees, but you still need to look for when a vacancy is because we will only be considering new CAFs for those yeah. committees. I that, think we would have to completely change the advertisement process if we went yeah. that route. Yeah. And the, and the form itself with maybe, right. I, I don't know, but we definitely have to completely change yeah. how we advertise the positions which could be good because it could help it as far as like keeping people interested and also making it way easier for chairs. So 
something to think about. And I'm going to uh, give a time check. It's 12.02. Yeah, I'm willing to take this to 12.15, but at that point, we really do have to stop because we do have uh, two, um, a citation and a, uh, uh, what do I have? A citation and a proclamation. Proclamation, we to, yeah. We need to review. And I'd like to get a set of two sets of minutes that I've looked at. I'd like to get them approved. Um, and I would give at the max 15 minutes to that. Um, so we can begin section three, um, unless the committee, I, I really, I don't have a hard stop, but it, it, this has been a long week and we have a later, later meeting tonight. Um, I'm really not eager to, to go on a well and past the 12.30 mark, but we could go a little longer. Um, but right now I'm thinking of stopping at about 12.15. Yeah, I have a hard stop at 1230 today. Right. Okay, well, that's, that's yeah, I do too. Okay, so let's try to let's start with section three. Um, so uh, the concerns have been noted, I will make sure they get into the report. Um, I think again, I would suggest what we're doing produces good fruit. It's, this isn't easy, but this is an interesting suggestion, Darcy, based on your concern. Um, and we'll see where it leads. But um, uh, so I think it's worth this, uh, even though it is time consuming. Sufficiency of the applicant pool. After the notice of vacancy or impending vacancy has been published for not less than 14 days on the town bulletin board pursuant to charter section 912E, the recommending committee may assess the sufficiency of the applicant pool. The recommending committee chair, again, we usually put or their designee, shall collect all CAFs. I mean, I, I just keep putting it in here, I, I you know, I long for the day when I can just turn to Pat and say, you're my designee. <laughs> I mean, she already has these, you just heard her, right? She just said, she has all these files with all these things in it. I could just turn to her and say, but it'll never happen as we know. So anyway, if you want to- Because I won't accept. I know, she'll just tell me to go to hell, so. No, put it in there, um, but right. it doesn't have to be the vice chair. It can be anyone, but I'm not. Right. Ah, right. Go ahead and put it in there. The the under the lined out CRC and GOL should actually be deleted instead of just yeah. Right. Lined Thank out. you. Let's do some. Let's and then the some. next okay. sentence. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, residents who submitted a cap in the proceeding shall be contested. I think okay. you <laughs> I misspelled it. Sorry, Pat. <laughs> Really you did that, man. That was me. I didn't read it before I sent it off to George. Um, oh, bad girl. Okay. Fantastic. Gives me something to do. Yep. All right, or, let's, uh, let's do your I, I so, lived to making you happy on these things, Pat. <laughs> I'm point stuff out I did wrong. <laughs> but, or all the, residents who submitted a CAF in the preceding three years shall be contacted prior to determining such as the applicant pool to confirm continued interest. And what we're imagining is we might even say and uh, re and required to submit a new CF, but they're not near there yet. The applicant pool shall be all residents who submit CFs within the preceding three years and who confirmed continued interest. Yeah, the or their designee needs to move down to the next line. Uh, all right. Thank you. Oh, right. no, nothing. Sorry. Okay. The applicant pool shall be already You should delete the, delete the order designee above. Mm -hmm. Here? That one. Yeah. Okay. That's a mistake. Thank you. I'm getting punchy. Check me assess efficiency. The recommended committee chair or the designee shall collect also. Okay, fine. So um, now, do we discuss whether we want new caps every time? Well, we could certainly put that language in here and, and then come back to it. Um, what are people's thoughts on that? It's an interesting thought. We're not going to sell this obviously today, but it would it would sort of make a marker for us to think some more about it and the, and the sort of changes that would be required. Yeah, um, I wonder, George, could we maybe have assigned one person or two people or three people to kind of, I know we're all so busy right now, but just to like give a cursory idea of how things would change if we decide we want to do this. That just, would be helpful. Just hmm. brainstorming like how the process works, how the forms work and how we, because we would have to overhaul it. So if we want to do that, maybe just 
informal, I mean, it can't be more than three of us, but we could have coffee or pastry or I don't know what, and just try to look at how it would formally have to be done. Wouldn't I would be willing to do it. Would it be a consultation with Athena? Wouldn't it just be having a conversation yeah. with Athena? Yeah. And, we, and, and uh, could be the chair plus uh, or whatever. I mean, if people- Why not the chair and Sarah? Reach out to Athena. just offered to do it. Right. Okay. Or I, I would acquiesce to somebody else if they have more knowledge. But I, I just think if we're interested in doing this, I think we should, I think it would make it, it wouldn't, it would be a, a fairly sizable overhaul. So it'd be worth just meeting with Athena and trying to just brainstorm how it structurally would have to change. It might not even be wicked complicated. It might just be going through step by step and I, I think I would be interested in knowing if, if we're pursuing this method, not even necessarily what has to change on the CAF or anything, because we could figure that out, but what, what we would want out of it. Would it still be that, you know, like in here, someone who submitted a CAF within three years still needs contacted to say, do that, because that doesn't change any work for... That's correct. Right. Uh, you know, and so what if we went ahead and said, you know, no, we're only going to take CAFs from X date and maybe it's not three years. Maybe it's the start of the fiscal year or the start of the, you know, the council term or yeah. What, what would the proposal be and what would the changes in the policy that we have right now have to look like maybe. Um, but, but what, what is a formal proposal of, is it just from the date that the bulletin board notices written is there any contacting of priors um you know prior applicants and all of that and how would like people who check off multiple boxes could you yeah. still do that oh, right you, or right, can we no right. longer do right. that yeah maybe we need forms for each committee well I, i'm not sure well, again I, i've had this situation in this most recent round where someone listed every single committee and so i felt I just reached out to them. I mean, they listed planning board, zoning board, and, and FENCOM. Yeah, I and guess so, I, I, yeah. I think what Sarah's saying is, yeah. you know, planning board, CAF, actually, I think ZBAs is the one that went out earlier, you know, was adver the, the bulletin board notice went out April 2nd, maybe. Right. Um, FINCOM just went out May 19th. Would we consider those that submitted a ZBA CAF on April 3rd, but also checked FINCOM as close enough to the FinCom date. I think that's where she's getting at. And what do you do with really specific? Like because yeah, like Mandy Jo's saying, you know, you couldn't, if you're saying that they have to put one in for every single round, I don't know how you would expect someone who checked off three different committees and then they're all, you know, maybe two to four weeks apart, unless the town actually sends them something saying, Bing, we now have a vacancy, you need to do another CAF. I don't think we can expect people to be that on top. I couldn't yeah. be that on top of it. And, and it's more concerning with ZBA and, and planning board because those vacancy notices went out a week apart. <laughs> you know, and so what do you do with the ones in the week um, since the process is happening near simultaneously? Mm. So I think that's so what thought yeah. through and coming back with a proposal on that. And I think that's not something that we can, we should be wasting Athena's time on. That's something for us to figure out. And so um, I don't know if we want to, I'm not sure that I have any brilliant ideas on this, um, but. I just think it bears thought because it may not absolutely. be that confusing, but it yeah. is enough to where we're, you know, we might even talk to Athena a little bit because they do I don't know. I, I just think we have to be really clear about dates and and that the you know the multiple committee thing might not work anymore. That's all. I, okay, I hear I, what you're saying. You know, my yeah. first initial thought is most of our appointments happen unless there's an odd out vacancy, April to for June 30, right? Right. Um, so maybe instead of three years, maybe we go back to January one of the current year, something like that. But so delete right. my files. I'd like that. You know, and and that would also ensure, from Darcy's concern, that the counselors always have every calf because, pretty much, you're getting sworn in January second, third, or fourth, something like that. Um, and so it wouldn't ever necessarily go back to a different council's term. 
what, what I like about going back two or three years is that um, it reaches out to people who at one point had expressed an interest and then for what, you know, they were turned down or whatever. And, um, you know, this would put an end to that basically, except for, you know, so isn't there a value in terms of just outreach in, in our going back two or three years, just to say, even though it doesn't produce very many candidates, at least, you know, it says to them, we're thinking of you. And if you're still interested, just fill out well, a CAF for this body. I guess, the, oh, go, sorry. I think the question is for Darcy is that we shouldn't be having to go back and collect everything. So if we're considering part of the pool, every single person who had put out a CAF, then the, it should be the chair's responsibility as soon as we know that there's a vacancy that all of those CAFs, even from three years ago, be right. And that's, that's what we, that's what you know, we they'll have to be confirmed, obviously, but then it would then become, you know, this is the chair's job anyway, to gather mm -hmm. them all together that, that within a certain amount of time, like 12 hours, they're all sent out to, they're distributed to the rest of the committee. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm just thinking. But they'd be they'd only be distributed if they responded. In other words, they got so somebody two or three years ago gets my email saying, you know, there's a vacancy. And and if you want to be considered, send us a CAF. Well, I'd that be is, interested if, if Darcy thinks that okay, or if she I think I and I'm not I, so Darcy, for you, does it does the whole pool mean every single person that's applied in the CAF or every single person who's applied in the last three years, whether or not they respond like we, you want an initial pool of every single person because that's what the pool really is um, before George starts knocking off people because he said they didn't reply. Yeah, I would, I would, you know, like here it says, you know, CAFs will automatically be sent to all counselors, you know, on initial application. So, so, um, that is the optimum. It's just that we don't get, you know, we don't get the, the CAFs if they aren't a new application. But I guess so I don't totally understand your question, Sarah. Um, well, the question is, is what do, so the problem is, is that we do get all of them, right? We do get pretty much everybody within our term but we have to keep them in folders. What I'm asking you is, is it more clear for you if when this comes up that George actually, or whoever it is actually collects everybody from the past three years and initially puts them out to everyone so that, that you can see everyone all together even before he stop, he starts saying, calling people and they, you know, somebody might say, uh, George Smith might not reply. But I think what you're saying is, is you wanna know that George Smith applied and Mary Flower, and you want everybody, even yeah. if you don't respond. You want it in one package, no? Uh, I That would be the optimum. I do remember that when we were, some of us were on OCA, we did get a spreadsheet um, that was everybody who had applied and uh, what what was the result of the contact with them um and so so we had an idea but we didn't have their cafs um so that's what so i, guess I still do right. that with pete planning board and zva and any appointments at crc there's a spreadsheet distributed that's not a public document before the meeting to determine sufficiency of the pool that indicates all of that Right, so I think that maybe that should be a uniform process so that, that counselors get everything from the last three years together with the spreadsheet. And then I think that one of the things with OCA that came up is that it should actually be the chair, and it's what we're doing now, but maybe we should make it clear, the chair is absolutely the one that, that um, contacts people. But it's just more of a tight package, I guess, I think is what Darcy's saying. She wants a spreadsheet, she wants to see everybody and their CAF from the last three years, which is easy enough to do because the chair would have to see them. Right. right. Well, actually, so, so so let me let me go a little farther. I actually, as chair, don't have um, all the CAFs right now. 
um, even though I have a list of names because I got that list of names from the prior chair of OCA who did the planning board and ZBA and now I keep a running total and I knock off the three years older, many of the ones that are older than two years never respond to anything so there's no need for me to go out and ask Angela or someone and hunt that CAF from before we were on the council because I'm not going to need it because they will never be part of the applicant pool that in the current policy needs then a CAF distributed to the counselors. Um, and so that would actually be a lot more work for someone that is not the chair. Now, going forward, as we transition councils, I'm hoping to eventually be able to put them into like a SharePoint folder that could then be updated regularly and uploaded like that. But you can't guarantee every chair will do that. Um, <laughs> Maybe you, know, we should. you know what I'm saying? No, no, so, seriously, so, that would be easier. I, I don't know. So, so I, I, like I said, I don't actually have all the CAFs to distribute. I have a spreadsheet that gets updated regularly at this point. I'm just thinking if we made that policy and then, you know, if somebody who was a chair needed the technical support, they could get it. I'm just thinking it would streamline the whole thing in general. I think it'd be a lot more work in the beginning, but I think if we learned how to do it, then as councils are turning over, if that's something you have to do, then obviously somebody would help you out and then we would start having the CAFs. So we might be able to add that into the community activity form section of this, but I also do want to do a time check. Yeah, I think it's, we're going to have uh, to stop. Yeah. Um, we're 12, going to move 18 to the, yeah, right we've really now. Reached, we've reached the point where we have to stop. I, I, ju I just want to say I'm sitting here thinking, I don't know whether I care. And so I'm trying to understand who a three year span of people who are going to all be contacted and I'm going to get every one of those CAFs and whether they're interested or not and and do what with them exactly you know okay. I, I don't I, I I think this is going too yeah. far yeah that's just where I am no, I have to agree with Pat. You, you should get the CAF to people who are actually interested. I'd, I'd much it's, prefer everybody yeah. having to re every to time you exactly. apply, yeah. and also maybe only being able to apply for one. So if you want to do ZBA finance and something else, you do two of them or three of them. I don't know, but um, I, I I don't see somebody. I, none of you have yet explained to me what's important about knowing who applied three years ago. I, I, I just, cause they, I don't know. Yeah. So just, so one of the times that Oka first started doing this, we found out that when it was someone else besides the committee um, who contacted people and it was such a big job, this could even happen to a chair that someone who had actually filled out a form was not contacted and only caught the fact that they weren't contacted and they weren't considered until we were actually choosing people. So How I- How old was that? that uh, it was new. That was, it, there was confusion about, it was a, a confusion. And, and it was just a confusion. It wasn't, that it wasn't it. anything malicious. And that yeah. what I'm saying is that it can happen. But I, I think what that led to was just wanting to be able to see everyone because mistakes could be made. And I don't have any feeling about that one way or the other. That's just the only example that comes to mind for me is that someone actually, because there was a gazillion people, it was the first time we did it, it was an honest accident. So, but that's, I think that's one of the reasons. All right. Um, we're going to have to come back 12, to this. 12.20. Yeah, we're gonna to have to come back to this. I'm going to have to, um, I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna put up, we have two documents. Let's see if we can get through them. First is a citation. I'm gonna put that up first. Um, this sponsor here is, is Lynn Griesemer. Um, I've gone through it once. Um, so I think I've taken fairly, let me just make it bigger. Um, so zoom to 200. Oh, so the citation recognition of Mira City Charity upon receipt of the Gold Award, Girl, uh, Gold Award Girl Scout, which apparently is the term. Counselor sponsor is Lynn Griesemer. The community sponsors the Girl Scouts of Central and Western Mass. Um, I've gone through this line by line um, uh, in the interest of time. Anyone have any concerns? Anyone look at this um, other than yours truly and see anything that needs to be changed? I think it's fairly, it's well written, it's clear. Um, I kind of like us doing these sorts of things. I'm nice to recognize 
the achievements of members of our community. Um, but that's a whole other issue. Um, I just had some minor changes, as you can see, that was it. Title is fine, format is fine. Darcy. I guess I would just say that, that if we are spending our time on proclamations with regard to individuals, we just have to accept the fact that we need to do it for every single individual that comes to us. This is a citation, first of all, not a proclamation. Yeah, not a proclamation. And citations are, in fact, in recognition of the achievements of individuals in our community. I think that's an important thing for us to do. We don't get that many. They're very rare, actually. Um, I'm thinking of, of making one of my own. Um, but I do think they're important, and they do come to us. So um, I'm, I'm just saying that yeah. we, if we do one, we have to do all that come to us. Uh, so that, yeah. we would we would vote on their clarity, consistency, and actionability, and the council would vote on whether to adopt them or not. That's the council right. decision. Right. right. As we saw with the Gorse Center, um, some councilors uh, did not uh, think it was uh, uh, relevant, and so they made that decision as individual councilors. So, but your point is taken. Um, our experience has been we rarely see these. Uh, I'll make a motion to declare the. Citation and recognition recognition of Mira Seti Charity upon receipt of the Gold Award Girl Scout, clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. Second, second. Angela. Okay. Oh, go ahead, George. I don't care. That's all right. Uh, so it's been made and seconded. I see uh, Darcy, please. Oh, no. I'm okay. You're, I'm sorry. Your hand, your hand is up. That's okay. All right. So I'm going to go to a vote and uh, start with Darcy. Yes. Pat. Aye. Sarah. Aye. Mandy? Aye. The chair is an aye. The vote is unanimous uh, to declare the citation to be clear, consistent, actionable. Um, I will send it on uh, to Athena and to Lynn. And I assume Lynn will say something briefly at the. Uh, Better be brief. <laughs> I, I guess I just have a. I understand. I mean, our meetings are crazy, but I think it's really important that we do this. It's kind of one of the few moments when, you know, no, I agree. I yeah. agree. I'm just being snotty. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> so again, moving quickly. Um, so bye bye citation. This is the uh, excuse me. I'll find it quickly. This is the LGBTQ proclamation, and uh, I'm going to share the screen. Okay. Why is this taking so slow? Okay. View. Um, zoom 200. So I inserted, you can see I did read this. It's obviously we've done this before. Um, there are two changes made. First is the council spo counselor sponsors are Pat DeAngelis and Evan Ross. Does Pat get a space between her D and Angelus? That's a question. I should, well, it's, I prefer the space, yes, okay. but it's been Do Americanized. You want to vote on that? Or, okay, all right. So we'll put a space <laughs> in. So Pat D. Angelus and Evan Ross. A very important change made in now therefore. Now therefore we, the town, by the way, we keep referring to ourselves differently, but I, I'm not gonna worry about that today. <laughs> uh, and we sometimes we're the town council of the town of Amherst, sometimes we're the town council. All right. Do hereby proclaim June, 2021 as LGBTQ Pride Month. Encourage all residents to celebrate our proud and diverse LGBTQ community and recognize this proclamation by raising the pride flag on the UN flagpole. So, so I'm the yeah. one that suggested this change. I think your strike through would actually need to be a delete, George, on hoisting. I, I, I just wanted people to see I the word hoist, which I'm very fond of. Send hoist to the council. Councillor Brewer yells at us for still using the word hoist and wants us to use raise. And so <laughs> I'm wondering if now's the time to change it to raise. And then she also has indicated sometimes it's nice to know which flagpole we want the flag on. Okay, I I, I want to go back in that now, therefore, because I actually think it should say the Amherst Town Council, not the Town Council of the Town of Amherst. Thank you. But, Thank you. I like that. And since I'm a sponsor, do it. I will do it. Absolutely. So we, the Amherst Town Council of the Town of Amherst. No. <laughs> All right. We, the Amherst Town Council. And, that, and again, punctuation. Delete, delete the comma after town. Oh, right. no, wait. Yeah, I think. 
Therefore, Therefore we, we the Amherst we Council, we do hereby... I don't think we need those two commas. No, we don't. We don't. We don't. Okay. Who says we don't get things done here? So we, the Amherst Town Council, do hereby proclaim. Excellent. And I someday someone will explain what is the problem with the word hoist. Um, but anyway, that's... <laughs> it okay. sounds like you're grabbing your crotch, George, and fixing your penis. I don't know. But, all right, please, please. Pat. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other thoughts? Emily, um, don't put that in the minutes. So George, <laughs> can you just actually highlight hoisting and delete it because the strike through ah, stepped all changes? Thank you. There. Thank you. So by this problem, by raising the pride flag on the UN flagpole from side. Okay, good. Um, oh, um, oh, go back down. Yep. We never spell out 24th. We just write it in numbers on the voted this. Mm -hmm. Voted this 24th day. The yeah, number? Pat's getting too like hoity toity there with spelling it out. All right, voted this 24th day of May 2021. Um, do we need to come after May? No. I don't um, think so. I think I, I'm losing it. Any other changes, concerns? Uh, uh, is Lynn's name spelled correctly? Uh, yeah. Recently, okay. yes, yeah. it is. Sorry. Yeah, okay. D R I E S. Yeah. He needs okay. to add it to his dictionary. Yeah. I have a dictionary. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm so out of it, technologically speaking. Uh, it's amazing okay, I can do so it. I'll, I'll make the motion to declare okay. the LGB, well, LGBTQ Pride Month proclamation clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. Thank you. Second, Second DeAngelis. Thank you, Pat. Um, so I'll go immediately to a vote. Start with Sarah. Aye, aye, aye. All right. Uh, Darcy. Yes. Okay. Mandy. I, but I think Sarah voted too many times. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll let the minute taker figure that out. Um, Pat. I, only if there's a new dance video. Okay, oh, well, we'll get Evan to work on that. And the chair is a yes. So the vote is 5-0 unanimous. Um, thank you all. And so that is done. Can I, I make like a motion that we accept the minutes for the two times? Actually two sets of minutes. Written. Yes, as I did make two, a couple of minor changes, um, if you're willing to accept me, my changes. Uh, so um, what are the dates? Anyone help April me? 21 and May 5. Thank yeah. you. The minutes of April 21 and May 5 as amended by the chair. Um, the motion has been made. Second. Seconded by, okay, by Mandy. Um, again, I'm going to make immediately to vote. Darcy. Yes. I'm Andy. Aye. Sarah. Aye. Pat. Aye. The chair is a yes. So that is five zero. The minutes are approved. Maybe we um, should do all proclamations and resolutions to the end of meetings. We might do them quicker. Yeah, I was just well, going to say the same thing. <laughs> I like to start out with something I think I can manage. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Maybe no, that was good to have them at the end. We're very motivated to get them done. Okay. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I um, next meeting. Uh, we did get um, two referrals from the council. One has to do with a resolution supporting a bill before the House and Senate, and the other is a committee um, charge, and that we will need to review. And I we have until June twenty one. But my intention is to act on that. Actually, I could use some advice here, but my intention at the moment is to act on that in two weeks' time. So those two would come to us. That would mean inviting. Um, and again, I could use some advice. Who should be invited um, to participate in this? Um, so we have, this is, um, uh, Somebody help me here. It's been it's too long. It's the African Heritage Reparations right. Advisory com or Commission, I think. Um, right. I, I would start with Michelle Miller. Um, yeah. She's the one that came to me. Her and Matthew are the ones that came to me about that charge that I helped get it in the form it currently is. Yeah. Um, so maybe approaching Michelle and asking her to be present. And if she wished one other member to be present, I don't really want a, 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 a I mean, a, a, people can come if they want, but actual um, participants, the sponsors should be one or two at the most, I would think. Yeah, so that would be Michelle and Matthew. Okay, well, I will, so I will invite them. 
And if they have someone else, they, I mean, uh, but okay. And we would deal with those two. Um, and we are continuing to work on this uh, process that we've been working on today for over an hour. Anything else that should yes. be on? Yes, yeah, go ahead, I would like, I am meeting this Friday with three sixth graders who are writing uh, a resolution uh, about um, some uh, Senate and, you know, uh, legislation on climate okay. issues and animal uh, management. They wrote a letter to the bulletin, which was accepted, and we're going to expand it to a resolution. And I would, I meet with them Friday. I'm hoping to be able to bring it to our next meeting. Okay. So there may be um, three uh, items related to our charge, plus uh, this document that we're working on. Um, we will be hopefully um, uh, declaring, we'll have to do, deal some business with FinCom and with DAB. So again, we've got, we'll have a very full agenda. We will need to, uh, uh, I'll have to sit down and think, uh, but we will have to get both FinCom and DAB moved along as well. Um, so we've agreed to postpone the DAB process for two weeks. I will notify everyone who has submitted an application that they're gonna hear from me now two weeks from today, not today in terms of the actual process. Um, and FinCom, we will be able to declare on June 2nd, we should be able to declare the pool sufficient and then uh, get kicked into gear. Um, but that's just a formality that should not take as long. So we should have good time available to, uh, to continue with this process that we're working on, but we will have three, it looks like we'll have three um, documents to deal with. Now we could, um, put off these uh, two, uh, Michelle and Matthew, to uh, the, the meeting after that. But I, uh, uh, we have until June 21. Um, so um, I don't know if anybody has any thought on that. So we meet, um, we meet 16th as well. Can we adjourn? Because I have to go. Okay, nobody has any. So right now, we're going to invite them to the June 2nd meeting. Okay. Thank you all very much thank you. for your hard work and patience. And thank you, as always, to Emily. And uh, see you all, some of you, tonight. Yep.